Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problem is light direction, and that is to create a compelling scene that looks believable. It's so much easier if you have a strong light source that's consistent across your image. So let's look at a few examples from the control paint community. This one here suffers from kind of ambiguous lighting. You can definitely tell what it is, but it might feel a little flat to you. When I did my paint over, this is the result I was left with. And this immediately feels more like a solid object. Now, the approach I took to get to this is to think of an egg. So if we have an egg here, this is essentially the same rendering setup as I've done for the character. It's just a smooth object. It's very simple. You envision the direction of the light, and I also had a little rim light over here to the side. So the top of the object is going to be generally more illuminated. The bottom is going to be less illuminated. And these broad strokes are true no matter what the shape is that we're illuminating. So I'll leave my little light indicator on top as I do my paint over. And I'll remember this egg. In fact, sometimes I'll even give myself a little study egg here just to kind of keep there as a reminder. And so I apply those same general levels of illumination to the tops of the forms, and then they get darker as they recede under the bottom, just like the egg. This is the sort of stuff that still lifes make you so much better at. Here's the before, here's the after. And light direction is just as important when we're talking about environments as when we're talking about characters. Here we have a scene that actually has really nice perspective the problem is that there's really no sense of lighting. I mean, I can tell that these are glowing lights, and I can see there's a bit of a spotlight here. But in general, all the faces are pretty much equally illuminated. So my paint over is pretty substantial here, but let's break it down. Here is what I did. First glance, we can tell one thing. There is an indoors and an outdoors. I wanted to set this at night because there were sort of glowing lights here. And we can look at, in general, everything outside is low contrast and darker. Everything on the inside is brighter. So we have sort of two light zones. Now within the indoor setting, I made sure to separate the light with plane. So we can see that there's light pointing straight down at these up-facing surfaces. And so the floor surfaces are brighter. And then these verticals are darker because they're not reflecting quite as much light. And then here where we have something protruding from the wall, I've given it a bit of a cast shadow and we can see inside the recess. We'll toggle before and after here. Before feels very flat and after you can see just the light and shadow gives it more depth. So you can see by establishing a clear direction of light and a very specific type of lighting, in this case, indoor fluorescent lights, gives it so much more solidity than the original. I didn't change anything but the lighting, and we go from before and after. And you can see it makes a big difference. Here we have an overcast day. And the thing about light is that all light is not equal. When you have an overcast day, you're not going to have strong shadows. You can imagine the difference between a foggy day like this and a sunny day at noon. So the first thing is to understand, in the abstract, the sort of light we're talking about. But even so, when I look at this scene, the way that the values are distributed is a little bit inconsistent. So here's my paint over. And you can see the scene feels a little bit more unified. And the amazing thing about light is that if you get the lighting correct, everything just seems to fit better. And the main rule I followed here was that things that are recessed are going to get a little bit of a soft shadow. So there'll be a little bit lower contrast and a little darker. And top faces of things, like the tops of these cars here and the tops of these boxes, I made lighter. So here, with this zoomed in, look at these cars and boxes I'll do before. Here, see how the sides of the box are the same as the top of the box? Same with the cars. Here's after. And you can see I just lightened up those top facing surfaces because they're pointed at the sky and darkened down the sides. And I applied that same treatment to everything in the scene. One more time, here's before, and here's after. Here's another example of a totally different light setup. This is sunset. And sunset has very different rules than an overcast afternoon. So the first thing I'll do for this is to find reference online, just to give me a ballpark for what these values should look like. 
and now I'll show you the paint over that I made. This is what I came up with. Immediately you can tell that there is a seemingly brighter sun and the buildings look less detailed. Well, not necessarily less detailed, but there's lower contrast details. So when we zoom out, we get a general separation of planes, foreground, middle ground, and background. There's a sense of atmospheric perspective. There's sort of this haze. But generally speaking, the lighting feels much more like a real time of day. Here's the original again. See how this feels a bit flatter? The areas that would be in shadow are really not dark enough. And as a result, the sun doesn't feel quite bright enough. You have to have dark in order for bright to feel really bright. So we'll look at mine again. So in this case, it was really just looking at photos of sunsets and trying to understand what about their value relationships I could apply to a painting like this one. Yes, it is an imaginary space, but why not learn from photos? And finally, I wanna conclude with one of my paintings. This is one that, in my opinion, is okay, but really the character is getting lost a little bit. If we were to really simplify this, there is a glowing light background and a relatively dark character. Well, that's fine if we want to give a mood, but if we want the audience to really appreciate the details of the character and understand what he looks like, this light is a bit distracting. So I decided to try a very different light direction, and here you can see what I came up with. Now I have much more of a top-down light source so that the top faces are catching all this light and you can see so many more details in the armor and in his shape. Now you've noticed I've actually not really added much detail in the background. That's because this is not a finished paint over. But you can see what a huge difference it makes. Now I'm not sure which one is better or worse, but you can see that a single image with nothing else changed has an entirely different impression when you change the light direction. So whether we're talking about a character or an environment, having consistent and realistic lighting will improve any painting. And a great place to learn this stuff is photo studies and still life painting. And I wanna thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.